Orlando. Orlando. Welcome to the Ozone. Welcome to the Ozone. Welcome to the Ozone. Welcome to the Ozone. The voice of massive magic fans. With the 15th pick in the 2020 NBA Draft, the Orlando Magic select Cole Anthony from the University of North Carolina. Welcome back to another episode of the Ozone Podcast, the voice of Magic fans. In the virtual studio today, we have Justin. Yo. Al. Yo. Myself, Anthony. And today we are recording on Thursday, which means that we are one day after the NBA draft, where the Orlando Magic selected Cole Anthony from the University of North Carolina. Wow. Crazy. Feels Crazy. good. It feels good. So for, first and foremost, let's get your initial thoughts, and then um, because I, obviously for me, my initial thoughts are completely different um, than my thoughts when I actually got to sit down, do a little more research than I initially had on Cole Anthony, and got to sleep on it. But let, let me hear from you guys first. What you guys think on the draft pick? All right, I gotta kick it off because I sat on here for the last two weeks, and I said. Tyrese Maxey is my guy. Tyrese Maxey is my guy, right? And then yesterday, I was um I was working on some graphics for for the draft, and then um I was actually going back and forth with Elise and bouncing ideas off her, and she goes, "You should probably make a banner for Cole Anthony." And I was like, you know, up until that point, like I saw him, and I didn't think he was gonna, you know, he was on the Magic radar. Just his style, I felt like he was a little too like glamorous for Orlando in a way you know what I mean and then I looked at his highlights and by the time I was done I was like yo Orlando might really pick Cole Anthony at 15 and then the draft happened and he was still on the board and I don't know Tyrese Maxey started feeling less and less likely Devin Vassell got picked up two picks before then and then they announced Cole Anthony and I was like oh man like I was excited just because of you know his offensive potential is insane Something we haven't seen with the Magic, um, and I, I'm super excited to have Cole in uh, in Orlando. I'm the same way, man. So I, I've been saying it now for what two weeks, um, in which I said all I wanted was a guard. Give me a guard that can shoot and someone that can score the ball. And yeah. I think we we found someone that can do both of those things in Cole Anthony. And not only that, I tweeted this morning in, in the Ozone um, Twitter page and Instagram, and I said it. When you go back to mock drafts from the preseason. This is a guy who was supposed to be a top three pick, if not a top pick in this draft. And I remember years back, this was supposed to be known as the Cole Anthony draft. You know, and to think about the fact that he dropped to us at 15, we now have Markel Ford, Fultz and Cole Anthony as our guards for the future. Man, we had Alfred Payton and DJ Augustine a couple of years ago. Uh, I cannot tell you guys how excited I am about the potential of these two guys in our team. Man, I am I am shocked. Like I was so shocked when they announced Cole Anthony. Like I was a hundred percent sure that um, Kyra Lewis was going to be our guy. The Magic really liked him. They brought him in twice. I really thought that that was going to be the guy that we drafted. He obviously went a lot earlier, right? Yeah. So as soon as he was taken, I'm like, all right. I'm literally in my defensive position, staring at the TV, and I'm like, just give me Maxi or R.J. Hampton. R.J. Hampton was was my guy, right? Obviously, didn't happen. When they said Cole Anthony, I was still hyped, but I did not see it coming. Why? Because it is completely against what our front office is so used to drafting, right? Versatile player, wingspan, defensive mind. Like, that's that's the, the prototype of what our front office have went after. And Cole Anthony is the absolute opposite of it. Now, Cole Anthony isn't a player that I even thought that we were going to draft. I, I saw the report that they said that um, he had mentioned that he had a really good workout with the Magic, but I didn't pay him any mind because I honestly didn't think that we were going to draft him. Um, when I heard the name, I was excited. I was excited because he is a name that I, as well, Al, remember that when he was he was the, the top prospect coming out of high school and going into the University of North Carolina, he was expected to be the number one draft pick in the NBA draft. Like he was supposed to be that dude. So after sleeping on it and doing research, he is exactly the player that we need right now. 
Like he is everything that we do not have. We do not have another player like Cole Anthony on our roster. And it's something and someone that we absolutely need for this team to get better. I am, know, I am hyped about it. I want to jump into into that really quick because I do feel like Cole Anthony is um, a special player and a player that's going to help us change this organization. Um, but in order for him to do so, I think a few things need to uh, fall into place. And I, I think we're going to get into that a little bit later. But I'm excited uh, to see what Cole Anthony can do. Now, what would you say for those? Because it's not like every Magic fan out there was like, man, this is the best pick in the world. You know, everything is unicorns and rainbows, right? You have certain Magic fans that are a little sour about the pick, mainly because they're a really big fan of Markel Fultz. How do you guys see Cole Anthony fitting in with Markel Fultz? Man, I think in today's NBA, there's not such a thing anymore as a point guard, shooting guard, or a small forward, power forward. It's just guys that play together. And, you know, we, we hear about the Toronto Raptors, Kyle Lowry, Ben Fleet, that, you know, that was very successful. You look at teams like the Denver Nuggets, you got Murray, you got Gary Harris, two, two guys that are not, you know, 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, There's some guys that are just 6'3", six, 6'4", six, and they make it work. In today's NBA, when you have speed, athleticism, shooting, and someone that can create off the bounce, that's what it's all about. You got to guard those guys. And again, this, this, in this NBA, it's all about offense. We were building kind of all about defense. It's the opposite in today's NBA. And I'm kind of glad that we're, we're recognizing that. Uh, we tried it last year with DJ and, and Markel. The issue there was the ball was in DJ's hands too much. and He would waste 20 seconds of the shot clock dribbling before passing the ball. I think if we can make it work in a way that the ball flows between these two guys and they take turns bringing the ball up, it could be lethal. Not, not great. It could be lethal because these guys can both – attack the hoop they can dunk on people they can shoot the ball i mean i'm excited and i can definitely see it working in orlando so i think previously when i was saying that um you know the possibility of cole anthony on this team could be great i think a lot of that is dependent on what happens with markel um one of the one of the duos that al didn't mention uh was damian lillard and cj mccullum and i think dependent on what Markel can do with his shot and his offensive game I think this can mimic that situation um and it'll be interesting to see you know everybody wrote out Markel wrote off Markel they said he was done um and then he came back he proved that his work ethic is there um and I think that's going to impact his ability to shoot moving forward the longer he plays the more confident he grows the more in the past the whole shoulder injury is for Michael, the better his his all around game is gonna be, uh, but I could see, like Al said, you know, a, a situation where you could have kind of dual point guards taking control. Uh, but again, if Markel's shot improved, I could actually see Markel move into that shooting guard role, um, and allowing Cole Anthony to to kind of own point guard. Yeah, and you would imagine, um, obviously it hasn't been reported yet, but DJ's out the door, so if you're if you're trying to find or if you're questioning how would they fit, how many times have we ran DJ Augustine and Markel Fultz on the floor at the exact same time? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cole Anthony is going to be such a major upgrade, and the confidence that this kid has is is insane. If you really listen to what he was saying during his press conferences and whatnot, he talked and stressed a lot about playing team ball. Um, one of the things that really rubbed me the wrong way was Anthony Edwards when he was talking about how he really doesn't even like watching basketball, right? right. You kind of just got a sense where it's he has all this talent and he's really just doing it because he's, he's good at it. He doesn't even want to work on the craft and be great. This is not the case with Cole Anthony. This dude legit said, and I quote, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think that there's 14 people in this draft who are better than me. That's the type of person, the type of mentality that you want. I don't care if you were drafted 15 or you're drafted 30th. If you don't have that exact mindset, that's not a player that I really want representing the Orlando Magic or representing any team, representing basketball in general. You want to have that type of player that has that killer mindset. And this is the best rebounding guard in the country. And this is also a kid that averaged 0.6 points less than the number one pick, Anthony Edwards, in points per game. And that's also a kid who missed five weeks, I believe, of play because of a torn meniscus. It's also, I don't know, it's just, it's, I think there's a lot of upside to him. Um, and just seeing his attitude, I, I wrote an article for the Zombie B um, that's going to be coming out by the time you guys listen to this. 
I think the one thing I learned from doing research on that article is that Cole Anthony has a never quit attitude, never give up attitude. Um, and it doesn't matter, you know, how, how high the cards are stacked against them. They told one of the things I learned, they told him they were advising him after he tore his meniscus not to come back and play. And he decided, you know, I owe it to these guys. We started something special. I got to finish it. And he came back, you know, after that injury where he could have just played it safe, kept his stock and just entered the draft either way. So I think Cole Anthony is going to be interesting moving forward. So, you know, what's funny last week we sat here and we're like debating about acquiring Russell Westbrook, right? And one of the things that we wanted in Westbrook was that fire, that passion, that drive. Mm -hmm. Someone that brought that dog attitude, which we have right now with, with Carter Williams, which I'm really hoping that he's back in our team. That's exactly who I see in this kid. Someone who's going to come in and just provide that fire to this team that we don't have. And it's funny, I was watching the draft last time with some friends here at home. And the first reaction is, he does not look like a magic player. And I'm like, I am really happy that he doesn't. Yo, he, we yo, don't he need really that. Does not. And the more I've researched him, the more I've done my work on him. I'm not sure if you guys watch his documentary on Bleacher Report. It's like a three episode yeah. um, thing on Bleacher Report. I watched the whole awesome. thing today. And man, this kid just wants to win. He wants to be great. And he wants to push his team to be great. He wants to win. He, he cares about basketball. That's about it. He doesn't care about anything else. Completely the opposite than Anthony Edwards, who's the first pick. And he would rather play football than play basketball. So, again, I just cannot tell you guys how excited I am about this kid and what he's going to bring to our team. And you know what? He also has star factor. I mean, we're talking about he got drafted on national television with Spike Lee in his living room. Like, if that doesn't scream like star potential, I, I don't know what does. And that's that's the type of stuff that we we need in order to kind of be in that in that media spotlight that we haven't had for a while. The closest that we've gotten to that is Aaron Gordon in the slam dunk not contest. To, not to brag, um, but that swag, that, like, vibrato about him, that's because he's York. from New York. That's oh, New York man. all day. <laughs> yes, it now, is. Now, now, really interesting that today they had reported that he has selected the number 50 um, for his uniform. Dope. How do you got? What do you guys think of the fifty? Do you like it? Is it is it weird? I like it. I like it because yo, I'm smiling super hard right now. I don't know why I'm so excited about this dude, but I don't know the number fifty. I mean, it's a tribute to his pops, which I think is dope. But it's also it's just different. You know what I mean? And I feel like that's what he is. He's just different, and and to represent himself in that way with a number that you traditionally don't see. I don't know. It's it's cool. And I like the double digit thing, you know, especially since we're getting rid of uh AG. Just bring another big number in. <laughs> hey, you don't you don't know that. You don't know that yet. Relax. <laughs> right. AG, yes. AG is still a magic player. That's awesome right now. <laughs> but no, I, I like it. You know, like 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 Justin said, it's it's a different it's different, you know. I I'm I'm a fan of single digit point guards for some reason. Number 3, number 1, number 5. But, you know, it's different, and I'll embrace it. You know, I, I see the reasoning behind it. I like it. Um, but it'll, it'll take some getting used to seeing somebody bring up the ball with a number 50 on their back. But, uh, again, that's who he is. I, I admire what he's doing for his dad. I mean, the first thing that came to mind was Jason Williams, mm. uh, another point guard, really, really nice with the Rock that, you know, had a high number range. Um, honestly, the number really doesn't matter. But – you know, it's it's again, you're used to the point guards wearing number two, number three, whatever the case may be. The fact that he's wearing number 50 really does show that, again, this dude is confident. He doesn't go. He doesn't follow by any rules. He's going to do whatever he wants. And on top of that, the number five and number zero looks nice in the Orlando Magic font. Mm -hmm. Like the old yep. school pinstripe. Uh, on, it's going to look super nice on the new city edition. And I, I think it's dope. Uh, again, I think that's another another avenue of, of his personality that, that we get to see. Now, drafting Cole Anthony wasn't the only thing that happened yesterday, right? We also got news of our very first trade of the season, which was the Magic traded our second round pick for 2020 to the Milwaukee Bucks for two future second round picks. One, I think is amazing that we still continue to do trades with Milwaukee, right? It's, it's just one of those things, right? Two, how do you guys feel about us just kind of throwing away our second round pick for something later on? It For me, it was fully expected. So I expected it. I, I woke up yesterday thinking we are not getting, you know, we're not drafting two rookies. And and I, I can see the reasoning behind it. You know, we have 
Chuma Okiki coming in as a rookie. We have Cole Anthony now as a rookie coming in. We already have Markel that's still kind of playing in his rookie contracts. And J.I. who's still very young. So I don't think we have the ability to develop five rookies or young guys. And Mo, and Bamba, Mo Bamba on top of that. Yeah. yeah, at the same time. So it was expected. I just wish we were smarter with what we would do with those picks. Not just, you know, thinking two picks in the future or one pick in the future. I would rather us see maybe package that pick with, with a player and, and get something of value, a shooter of some kind. Um, but again, I did not expect us to use it. I just wish it was not used for the future. I'd rather see something of value right now. Yeah, I agree 100%. Um, I don't necessarily have an issue with us uh, trading with, with Milwaukee. I understand why people do, um, you know, trading assets uh, or I would say immediate assets in the same conference is probably something you don't want to do regularly. Um I don't know. I don't I don't other than that I don't really have an issue with it. I think the Magic are realizing that they have some development ahead of them with, you know, the young guys that they have now. And like I said piling on more young guys to that is going to make it more difficult. I see that I see why the Magic did it. I I'm all for it. It doesn't make sense. You already have two rookies on your roster now and you traded one second round pick. In a, in a draft class that they've already said was a very weak draft class. Yep. And you trade it for two future second mm-hmm. rounders. You get two for the price of one for just sending one out. It makes a whole bunch of sense to me. I get that, you know, it's a little frustrating because our front office have already done that before. And we've shown that we can make value out of the second round pick uh, uh, drafting a player like Wesley Awandu that we're going to talk about more later on. But I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm glad that they did it. Uh, again, we already have one too many rookies on our roster now um, that we want to put all our time and energy on. And outside of Wesley Wandu, have any of our other second rounders really panned out? Probably not. It was also a really late second rounder. So I'm A-OK with them trading it off because, yeah, we'll we'll use that later on. Maybe for something better, right? Now, the Magic also did announce that they officially signed Chuma Okiki to a rookie contract. For those that remember, um, when we drafted him last year, he was still dealing with his injury. We did not sign him to an official NBA contract. We redshirted him for a year, with this a little, which is a little unorthodox and kind of smart by the Magic front office as well. But we've officially signed him. He will be on the team. He is healthy. He is ready to go. What do you guys think about the official signing of Chuma Okiki? I'm excited about it. I think uh, we've heard about Chuma for a while now. Um, and I don't necessarily know what Chuma is going to be. Um, Elise, you know, we were pretty active over, like I said earlier on the Zombie B. She wrote an article and she had a comparison, a player comparison to uh, Chuma, which I found was interesting, was Jimmy Butler. Um, and in the article, she kind of breaks down their similarities and, you know, how after the fourth season, Jimmy kind of took off and she sees a little bit of a, a similarity with Chuma. And I think it's an interesting read, but I... um. I think Chuma does the right things on the court defensively and offensively. Um, I think he plays within his game. He doesn't try to do too much, with, which I think is going to benefit uh, this team mo- moving forward because we'll have more pieces who can contribute offensively and defensively. Um, so I just expect Chuma to come in, work hard, and um, like I said, make the right play. Yeah, same, same thing here, you know, not, not a lot to say because, again, we haven't seen him play. And honestly, I didn't see him play a lot in college. Um, but what we've seen of him is a shooter. He can defend. He can defend anyone from a shooting guard all the way up to a power forward. Mm-hmm. So when you hear those things, it's exciting automatically, you know. Um, so I'm excited to see what he brings to the table. Um, and when you combine him with Cole Anthony, man, Chuma was another guy that was supposed to be a top 10 pick. And just because of he got injured, dropped to us. So when you tell me we're going to roll out next year with Markel Fultz, Mo Bamba, a Chumo Kiki, and a Cole Anthony, man, those are top, those are four players who were top 10 in back-to-back years. Like, it's exciting as hell to see what our team will look like. Um, so, I mean, I just want to see him shoot the ball well. If he can do that for us, that'll be a huge lift to our team. Yeah, and... I've talked to a, a few people and they, they kind of agree with me. If Chumo Kiki was drafting this year draft instead of last year, he would definitely be within the top eight or ninth pick in the NBA for the NBA draft. So you're really looking at two players that should have been really high lottery picks playing together. So you have Cole Anthony, 
Chumo Kiki. And now all of a sudden, Jonathan Isaac getting down, getting down and missing this whole entire year doesn't hurt as bad. It doesn't. The thing is kind of uh, not as bad because you're so excited to see these two players. And I think that they're really, really going to change the way that this team plays because of their dynamic and and the the start level that I think that both of them will be able to contribute. So I I think Chuma Kiki is going to be uh, a sleeper that people are going to be like, man, how in the world did we let the Orlando Magic steal <laughs> two of the best players on both of these drafts? And I think that is really going to alarm a lot of these NBA teams. What do you think is Okiki and Anthony's uh, initial kind of impact on this team? So I think... Cole Anthony's a backup point guard day one. I, I don't see him being a third string. I think he comes in and he he backs up Markel day one. Okiki would be a, the backup small forward, I think, at, at the beginning of the season at least. So whoever that small forward is, whether it is that we bring back Ennis or whatever happens, um, I see him getting, you know, initially 12, 15 minutes a night just because he, they're trying to make sure that his knee is good. But I think mm-hmm. as the season progresses, he'll become that next kind of Markel type of player. Like he may get more minutes. He may play more minutes behind AG. Um so I think early on in the season, we've got to be patient. I don't think the Magic will throw him out there to play 15, 20 minutes a night just yet. Um, so both of them should be part of our bench rotation. So it'll be fun to watch Cole Anthony, Terrence Ross, and Chuma Okiki coming off the bench. Um, that's uh, some some shooting in there, at least, that we never had before. I had made a, an argument with um, someone on Twitter, and the argument that I made was that the team that we have now, there's still too much Rob Hennigan in it. Right with yeah. the core of Vooch, Evan, Aaron Gordon. And one of my frustrations with the front office is the fact that they really haven't put a major footprint on the roster. And now that I think of it, if you take a look at the players that we have now, slowly but surely, they're putting their imprint on there. And the Chuma, the Markels, the now Cole Anthony, Mobamba, Jonathan Isaac, the day that we get to see that full product all together on the court at one time the the starting five of the Welt Ham experience I think is going to be crazy I think it's going to be crazy because now you're starting to look at a different era of Orlando Magic basketball so it's it's going to be exciting man it's going to be crazy to see now let's let's get into some get it off your chest so on social media we went ahead and wanted to hear some responses from the fans with so much that's going on and we're just going to read a couple off and one of the ones on the Orlando Magic HQ on Instagram was from the Drake 92 where he says, God, finally someone who can score the ball. Good pickup. Is it is it really have the fan base really been fiending for a player that can just easily score the ball? Hell yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man. So there was four of us. So so four of my friends and myself last night watching the, the draft here. And we, we all agreed, no Twitter, no social media, let's watch it live. And the reaction was the same across the room, man. We're all clapping and jumping, just high-fiving each other. It, again, we just haven't had a player that we know coming in can score the ball in four years. You know, it's been J.I., which we knew the struggles scoring the ball. Mo Bamba, we knew the struggles with him just getting used to the NBA game, so we didn't expect much from him from the jump. And then last year, we knew Chuma wasn't going to be playing so it's our fourth draft now where we we're not getting a guy that we knew hey that guy can come to the, the league and drop some buckets um so it was exciting to draft a guard number one but also just someone who can score the ball so yeah i completely agree with with the comment there um the excitement was definitely felt across the fan base 100 percent. i'm hoping that with uh cole anthony's addition we don't have three four four and a half five minute stretches where we can't put the damn ball in the basket so I'm excited. Man, if you if you take a look at it and on YouTube, you can kind of see a whole bunch of different scouting videos on Cole Anthony if you really want to get an in depth look. But one of the names I keep that keeps popping up as a NBA comp is uh, Jamal Murray. He has yeah. a lot of Jamal Murray ish in his game. Like this dude is literally super confident. Can put the ball on the on the hoop. Can take the ball, penetrate. He he has a lot of size which I was uh, I was really surprised about. Like, this dude is okay with taking the ball to the basket and getting contact and still being able to finish. Yo, his, finish, his finishes through contact are beautiful. Like, I'm, yep. it's, some, it's another aspect of his game that I think uh, is going to help him get to another level, especially with Markel, who could finish through 
contact with a Mack truck. Like, so our guards are going to be tough guys, you know, not, not guys that are going to be shying away from, you know, playing down low if the opportunity arises. And, and between the both of them, they both like to drive. You're going to start to see that we, we're, we're getting to the line a lot more. So we'll be able to get some more of the offensive push from the free throw that, you know, again, this is something that our team has needed for a while. A hundred percent. Now, this next one comes from Josh Gomez Music, again from the Orlando Magic HQ Instagram page, where he says, I'm a bit confused on who we would have to move to accommodate for another point guard. We'd have to trade for Michael Carter Williams or DJ Augustine, possibly some guards to move Fultz to the shooting guard position. I'm trying to think here. Well, I mean, we know DJ I mean, is not coming back, right? Yeah, so uh, DJ obviously isn't because I I definitely see Cole Anthony filling in the the DJ role. Um, definitely in the beginning, coming off the bench, playing around the twenty to twenty five minutes range and whatnot. But I think between Markel Fultz and Cole Anthony, Cole Anthony's definitely in the shooting guard out of the two. I think at least this season coming up, yeah, for sure. Because he has to get used to the NBA game and the playbook and all that. I think initially he'll be the two guard out of those two. Right, and I again, I think a lot of that is going to be dependent on what Markel's shot looks like coming coming into the season. Um, yeah, so. And I think NCW should be back in the team, and I really hope he does come back. And he will play that two and three. I don't. He will play now that we'll talk about it later. But if one dude is not coming back to the team, um, I think that two and three will be filled by NCW. I think a lot of minutes will go to him initially. Um, so again. He's another guy that can play with the ball in his hands. So I think between the three of them, they can do a pretty good job playing that, that point guard slot for us. All right. So this next one is coming from the Ozone Pod on Twitter from at Corey underscore Hayes 407. He says, I love the pick. Tremendous upside was projected top three before injury and playing on a bad UNC team. Cole and Markel together will be lethal. Will the two of them together in the same lineup, would that really do some damage in the East? Yes, I, I think so. Um, I think the only question mark is how is the dynamic going to work? Again, is Markel going to handle the ball? Is Cole going to handle the ball? There's, you know, that's up in the air. Uh, but I think w- once the chemistry is built, I think that that's going to be a pretty uh, serious backcourt. Completely agree. I think you you have speed. Shooting at least, at least I know we know Markel has some work to do there, but at least attacking the basket, creating shots, those two guys again at the core at the same time, you got to play defense on them. So if you can combine the two of them with some shooting around them, man, it's gonna be fun to watch them play, and they can definitely be lethal in this league. Yeah, and Jeff Waltman in his press conference um, after the draft, he had said that because it was asked of him, like, what are you gonna do with Cole Anthony with Markel Fultz as your point guard, and he simply said that. They view Cole Anthony as a modern day guard. They yep. s- he's able to do both one and two, and the dude has a mentality of a team player. So he's going to do whatever he has to do for the success of the team. Right? That's that's his message. That's what he's coming out with. And I think that between the two of them, Mark Hill, he has a lot of he has a lot of gaps in his games. But those gaps are things that Cole Anthony is able to support. And then the gaps from Cole Anthony's game is something that Mark Hill is able to support. So I yep. think that they're really going to do a good job at complimenting each other. It's going to be fun to watch. Now, surprisingly, because I, I thought when we were going to do this episode that um, there wasn't going to be a whole lot that we we're going to talk about. That was just going to be around the draft, and then that's pretty much it. Boy, were we wrong. <laughs> we have a lot to cover. So we're going to jump right into um, uh, right into the juice or playing with stuff. So a report had came out from Brian Windhorst that Orlando have made Aaron Gordon and Evan Fournier in trade talks to attempt to go younger. Are you buying this whole Orlando Magic trying to go younger and trading a 25-year-old Aaron Gordon and a 27-year-old Evan Fournier? So I, I think they are, but they're being careful the way they go about it. I think when they say go younger, it doesn't really mean just go younger like a 19-year-old prospect that's three years away from being ready. They're trying to get somebody who can play now. And I really thought that someone might have been, which a guy we talked about last year, was like a Kelly Uber type of guy. So where you, you, know, you flip Aaron Gordon for him. So now you're adding scoring, some shooting, and some balance to our roster. Obviously, we now know that Kelly Uber is going to Golden State, so he's not coming here anymore. But that's kind of the, tried, the trade that I think they're looking to make. It's 
it's a smart trade. It's not let's trade Gordon for a pick and some random scrub that's going to sit on the bench, and he's just young. So I think the wording is right, but I think they got to define the fact that the Magic do want to compete. They do want to make the playoffs still. I do not think for one second that they're ready to embrace tanking or losing this upcoming season or the years ahead. Um, so I believe it. That's why we haven't made a move. They want to get the right package for these guys, not just anyone. Yeah, I agree. And then the the crazy part about it is we received kind of a, a little indication of what were some of the things that were brought on the table for Aaron Gordon. So another report came out that Orlando had turned down um, a Portland Trailblazers offer for Aaron Gordon. Aaron Gordon was said to be a number one target for the Portland Trailblazers. They ultimately ended up making a deal with the Houston Rockets. Now, the reporter had also mentioned that the offer was pretty similar. And we're going to use the Houston trade as reference. So the Blazers has sent Houston Trevor Reza, the number 16 pick, and a protected 2021st first round draft. Are you okay with the Magic turning that down? Big time, yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't see. I don't see the immediate value, um, and I, I think that the Magic must be feeling like you know if we're not going to get an immediate, you know, immediate compensation for AG, then there's really no need to trade him. Like, I feel like if they didn't trade him, you know, at the end of last season or before trade deadline last season, then there's no rush in trading him now, especially when, you know, you drafted a, a guy who's going to potentially uh, contribute on offense to where. It'll make it so we don't need AG to drop 20 for us every night. And so he could drop his 10, 12, 13 points, and it doesn't look as bad. Yeah, and like I said a few minutes ago, again, this team is not ready to quit and just trade for someone like Trevor Ariza, who talented guy, talented player, but he's not a starter in this league anymore. So what are you trading him for then? You're trading him for the picks. So again, the Magic are not, ready, not about to do that. They're not ready to take a step back and, and not make the playoffs next season or not compete for the playoff spot. So um, I really think that they did it simply because they're, if they do trade AG, they want to get something of value back, something they can use right away and help them compete. Um, and like I've said before, J.I. is not playing this season, so why not hold on to AG until at least a trade deadline, which is only three months away from now or four months away from now, and see what happens between now and then. If the team underperforms, Vucevic is out, you know, hurt again or something like that, God forbid that happens, we don't want that. But if that does happen then that's where you can trade AG and Fournier for something of future thinking now, picks or whatever. But as of right now, why force it? So um, while we don't want to run it back necessarily as a fan base, we also don't want to just give up these guys for nothing. Yeah, it's a double-edged sword because you have half of the fan base saying, oh, well, this front office is soft. They don't want to risk anything. Uh, I have fell victim to um, saying those things as well. <clears throat> but at the same time, when stuff like this is being presented and we know that we know Aaron Gordon's value, do we value him a little bit more than, let's say, other teams? Maybe. But we also want to make sure that if we're going to do a trade, then it needs to make sense. In that scenario, it definitely did. <laughs> now... In addition to that, uh, we also received reports that um, James Ennis declined his player option and will now become an unrestricted free agent, leaving the Magic with a hole at the three for a starting small forward position to fill. I think that this gives even more indication unless we find a replacement at the three that maybe it's not a good time to trade Aaron Gordon. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think that I did not expect this one. That is one thing that I did not expect was Ennis opting out. Um, I really thought that he would want to come back. He was going to get the minutes, prove himself, and maybe next year, where more teams are going to have cap space, go into free agency. So when I saw the news, I was, I was a little taken aback and surprised by the news. Um, not a guy that we don't want to have. We cannot afford to not have him unless we know for a fact we're going to sign someone to replace him, and that's going to be an upgrade somewhere, somehow. Um, that's the only way this makes sense to us. Yeah, I agree. I think not having Ennis, um, not extending a qualifying offer to West of Wundu, I think it's some question marks. And, you know, I, I criticize this front office a lot, but I feel like they they do have a plan. I don't necessarily see it at times, uh, but it appears that they have a plan. And if they do, then I'm sure that they've, like you said, accounted for the fact um, that these guys are, you know, off and they need to add a, a small forward. 
Yeah, and at the same time, I'm taking a look at the free agents at the small three position that we could replace. I'm really not crazy about the names. There's not a whole list of lengthy, amazing small threes. You have players like Maurice Harkless that initially used to play for the Orlando Magic, but then you also have players like Jay Crowder that, yeah, he can bring veteran, he can bring some shooting and some body, but I really like what James Ennis brought to the team. And I feel like if there's a deal to be made, then we should definitely do whatever we can to kind of keep him on because he definitely was a big factor to the team. I think one of the guys that I'm, and I I, I said this to you guys in the group uh, chat, one of the guys that I'm looking at to fill that spot is uh, Rodney Hood. I think uh, I was actually surprised that Portland didn't bring him back, especially because I feel like the times that, you know, he did step up for Portland, it was in big moments. Um, And he's a veteran. He's not too costly. Uh, so that's that's a guy I'd like to see um, Orlando bring in. I think he can contribute offensively. His veteran presence is, you know, going to be something that benefits the team as well. Um, and he's not too, what do I want to say? Like, he doesn't stir the pot. You know what I mean? He's just very kind of, like I said, mild-mannered. Um, that's something that the Magic like. So offensively, he could, he could contribute. His personality matches what front office looks for. I think uh, Orlando could make a move. What do you guys think about Cant Bates more? No. No. So he's just known to be a three-point shooter. He can guard a little bit, but not him, right? But again, Jay Crowder, we talked about already. The only other name out there, which I don't see him coming to Orlando, is Wesley Matthews. Um, I think he's going to a, to a contender. Um, Mo Harkless. And that's, that's about it. There's not really another small forward out there. And again, I really thought this was a year the Magic may give some minutes to Iwandu and kind of give him a good look. But again, as we now know, he will not be coming back to Orlando. So again, this Ennis not coming back or at least opting out for the time being just makes me wonder what that next step will be. But again, I, I think the front office has a vision and that's why they opted out of Iwandu and Ennis. So I, I think they might know something that we don't know yet. And with free agency being tomorrow... They might be picking somebody up already or have a verbal agreement with someone that we don't know yet. So um, we're going to have that's, to wait and see how this plays out. I would say that's why the Kelly Oubre move is even more questionable, right? Because there's an, um, you know, there's the situation with Evan, and then you have Kelly who just got traded to OKC. And you would think, you know, that especially because Evan is in the last year of his contract, it would be, you know, a salary dump. Why would they not make that move or attempt to make that move? I mean, I guess it's possible uh, they could have attempted to make that move, but nobody's reported it. Uh, so I just find it a little interesting that needing a small forward, you're not going to reach out to OKC about Kelly Oubre. And just to provide a little, shed some light to it. So the Magic had offered a qualifying offer to Gary Clark, um, which is making him a restricted free agent. So if he wanted to, he can go out and see if there's any other contracts that would be more than what it's on the table from the Magic, and then the Magic will have the opportunity to be able to match. Right. But the Magic also did not extend a qualifying offer to Wesley Owandu, making him a restri- making him a unrestricted free agent, so he's able to test the waters, go to another team. And we also did not pick up the option on Melvin Frazier. Um, this one was a tough one because Wesley Wandu was a, a second round pick that we discovered that we developed and he was able to prove that he can be an NBA player um, in this league. And he's done really, really well for us with us obviously having a need now at the small three and Wesley Wandu being able to fill that position. I find that also kind of um, I don't want to say alarming, but it's making me question as well what the direction is. Obviously, the Magic did like what Gary Clark was able to bring to the table because he did a good job in the playoffs for what it's worth um, in guarding Giannis. But the fact that they decided to stick with Gary over Wesley Owandu, I thought was surprising. Could you see Gary Clark playing long-term three? No. I No, no, but he could play the three. He would play more of the four, but he's able to play the three. He can stretch the floor. Yeah, going, I, I just don't know, going into the season with, you know, this is assuming nothing happens during free agency, which I don't think will be the case. I think Orlando is going to be active. Um, It would leave questions because, I don't know, with a hurt J.I., I don't know, I feel like there's a lot in the air. And I feel like if, if you're going to bring in three young guys, right, which is basically what you're doing with Markel Cole, um, 
Chuma. I'm blanking. Yeah, <laughs> and Chuma. And Mo Bamba, so four. Well, yeah, and Mo Bamba. Um, there has to be some type of direction. You don't really have the space to kind of leave a whole position up in the air and kind of fill it as you go. So, you know, one thing that's interesting to me is yesterday in the, in the post-draft press conference, um, Jeff Walton did say, you know, in today's NBA, it's all about shooting. It's all about playmaking. And that struck me as the first time I've heard him say that. Yep. And now I'm looking at the way he's building this roster. What did he do? He chose Gary Clark over a guy I know they like a lot in Wesley Wondu. But what can Gary Clark do? He can shoot the ball with, with his eyes closed. Like he's, not, he's not shy about it. He'll shoot the ball. So I'm intrigued. This all, if all these little moves are making again, Cody Williams is the only guy I, I really want back, but he's not really a shooter. So I, I really hope he's back. But the way I'm seeing them build this team is really adding shooting. So Ennis, not for nothing, but he's been a good shooter in the past. He mm-hmm. wasn't a great shooter last year. Right. So did they realize that? Like, hey, we don't want to commit to you long term. We're okay with you walking away. And it's that, and it's that why they he's not back in Orlando next season. Right. So what's kind of interesting to me is I want to see what tomorrow and Saturday look like for our roster just because for the first time ever our front office is going after shot makers and shooters and that's something that we haven't done before so we should be exciting as a fan base and then again don't forget we can still make a trade between now and Monday um what's gonna happen with Fonye we don't know but uh it seems like they have a vision as to how this roster should look like but I think that's also the benefit of having a versatile (laughs) roster Right, you have players like Aaron Gordon that can play the three and play the four. So maybe they don't like the three options that they have. They could, if they wanted to, just push Aaron Gordon down to the three and then pick up another forward to be able to be in that position. We've if you're going to have Amino starting, but we've yep. seen we've seen Ag play the three, and that's I believe the worst um, fit for his skill set. Um, and I think if you're if you're not trading Ag now, it's possible you trade him later, closer to the deadline. And you wouldn't want to continue to hurt his stock, right? You'd want to put him in a position where at least he thrives and you can sell him to other teams, sell the idea of AG to other teams. Now, league sources have also said, and I'm dying to hear your perspective on this, Justin, that Evan Fournier is trying to find his way to a team like the Clippers, the Suns, and the former team um, that drafted him, the Denver Nuggets. I think it's surprising because this is the very first time that we've heard that Evan Fournier, him, the player, has decided that he wants out. Like, dude, if you want it out, why'd you opt into your contract? Obviously, because you want the 17, 18 million. Right. But it's, it's surprising to hear that those are the three teams that he would like to um, play for. Yeah, I mean, and all of those all of those teams are you have to assume contending, right? With the Suns picking up Chris Paul. You know, I, I think I saw a stat like in the last, I think, seven or ten seasons, none of the teams he's been on have been under like 45 wins or something like that. So you have to believe that the Suns are going to be contending as well. I don't know. I think I think um, I think it's time for Evan to find a new home. Um, and the reason why I say that is because as much of a Fournier fan as I am and as much as I appreciate his game, um, I, I feel like this front office and this team is moving in a different direction, which is more toward uh, agility, you know what I mean? And pushing the pace and athleticism. And um, while Evan can shoot, I think he, he kind of falls short in those other realms. And because of that, I don't think he fits on this Orlando roster moving forward. Wow. What's today's date? Hold no, on. Mark it, mark it down the calendar. 19th. I got to write this down somewhere, man. <laughs> this is the first time I've ever heard Justin say, it's okay for Fournier to go. This is the same guy who back in December was betting with us that Fournier was going to sign out a hundred $100 million contract. <laughs> $100 million man <laughs> in Orlando. But yeah. hey, no, 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 on a serious note, I mean, I really think this is all fluff. It's all rumors. It's, it's going to be in the media. I really don't think the Magic trade Fournier at this point. I think he'll be back in Orlando. We're going to see him out there December, whatever it may be, the 22nd, 23rd. Um, where we move him, I really believe, is at the deadline. That is when you got to get something back for him because he's expiring. You don't want to lose him for nothing. You trade him at that point. Now, one team in that list is the Denver Nuggets. If they call an offer, Gary Harris, to us, yes, in some sort of whatever, salary filler, at that point, they say, you know what? That makes sense to us. The Suns, who do they have? 
or the Clippers. They have no really young guards that we would like no. or that are tradable. I don't think they will offer us anything solid. So I don't know. I don't see Fournier again being moved just yet, um, but it will happen in the next 12 months. I know that for a fact. And, and I really think March or whatever the deadline is, that's when it happens. Hey, I mean, in the next 12 months, his contract will be up. So I would assume that he'd be out of here in 12 months. Well, but that's I, what I I'm think... saying. Like, either we lose him for nothing or he's going to get traded. But he's not going to yeah, be there, no there's no, there's no way. There's no way that he ends up signing another contract. Like, no. he knows the writing is on the wall. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. And it, it's crazy because when you see these rumors, you always want to ask yourself, who who does a rumor benefit, right? Because if you're able to pinpoint who it benefits, then you're able to know exactly who leaked it. Um, obviously, we already eliminate the process of the Orlando Magic. It's not the Orlando Magic. So I, it leads me to believe that this rumor is true because Evan Fournier already got his money and he's trying to be out. True. So I, I strongly believe that um, this rumor is legitimate. Um, this was a rumor from Zach Harper of The Athletic, which I thought was interesting because it's not like really any ties to Orlando Magic and having that type of information. But if you're trying to find your way out and trying to at least force your landing spot you release your what, own rumor what better you release your own rumor <laughs> yeah you hit up the man yourself be like yo zach these are the teams that i'm trying to go to i need you to throw it out there and then that's what it is huh. so it's it, it's something that i i believe it and if that's the case then bye nay <laughs> yeah listen if that's the case i'll be a, i'll be happy as hell to move him by tomorrow <laughs> But it's it's it is cool to see that we've already like we're already uh, feet deep into the changing of the roster. No more Wesley Owandu, no more James Ennis, uh, no more Melvin Frazier. Now you're adding Chumo Kiki, you're adding Aminu back. Now you have Cole Anthony, and this is just us going from the trading period to the draft. And now we jump into the free agency, which will begin Friday at around 6 p.m. So who do you guys want to see the Magic pick up? And if you do want to see guys from our roster, who would you like to see the Magic re-sign? So I'm going to start with guys that I want to see back. So I I wouldn't mind seeing back Gary Clark. He proved to me that he's a fighter. He's going to play defense. and He's going to shoot the three. All I want in him, a 3 and D player. I want to see MCW come back for sure. So that leaves us at 12 roster spots. That's 12 filled roster spots if we sign those guys back. That means we have three spots left. Ah, man. Um, we need a three. So we need a, a, a small forward. Um, I'm really, I really want to see Jay Crowder in this team. We like that dog attitude, like someone who goes out there and hard, gives a hard foul plays defense and can shoot the three, I think he's a great guy to sign in our team, not only for n- only now, next season, but also for the next few years. And then after that, we just need some shooters. I wouldn't mind seeing a guy like a Marco Bellinelli get picked up for cheap uh, just to spark some offense off the bench. Um, and that's really all I can think of. I don't see us filling up all the roster spots. We always like to have the one available roster spot in case a trade goes down or something. So I think if right. we come back and, and we have Gary Clark, MCW, a Marco Bellinelli type of guy, and maybe a Jay Crowder, man, that would be a solid defensive but also shooting team. Yeah, I mean, I, I tend to think that Orlando doesn't like making splashes, right? They don't like to be uh, talked about in the media or anything like that. So I'm looking for low-key guys, um, you know, that they could bring in. And I said Rodney Hood was one of the guys I was looking at. Um Another guy who could shoot that I think Orlando might be interested in is uh, Davis Bertans. I think he would be a good pickup. Um, a solid veteran like Paul Millsap, I think, could help this team. I think he might be a little too expensive, but I think he could help nah, this he, team. He's already played us once. Well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and, you know, another guy, because I'm not really sold on Mo Bamba, and I know he's young, but everything he's shown us has not led me to believe that um, – you know, that he is going to be uh, a mainstay in the NBA. Uh, but another guy is Willie Cully Stein. I'd be interested in seeing Orlando make an offer um, in that direction. Yeah, if, um, if there's a player that I would absolutely want is like my number one target, but I know that's not happening because he's just going to garner way too much and he's going to be expensive, um, especially in a position where we we know that we're just waiting for Jonathan Isaac to Let come back. Let me guess. Back. Shoot. Gallinari? Nah, oh. nah, 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 
Nah, I'm Oof. good. Now, nah, Joe Harris. Oh, Joe yeah. Harris is definitely he's definitely a player that I would want to see because he's a knockdown shooter. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a three point contest winner, and he doesn't just do well with shooting the ball. He shoots the ball on the move. So he's yeah. he's a player that could definitely stretch the floor for us, and he's somebody that I like. It's going to be interesting because he, there has been talks about him signing with Atlanta. And they're willing to pay for him. Um, uh, again, I, I think that he's going to be way too expensive uh, for the three position. At the same time, it's kind of like, well, if we didn't let him go way back when, then we wouldn't be in this situation That's anyways. Right. So. But I, I have a question. So wouldn't you, I, in my eyes, and I might be completely wrong, um, but I feel like Joe Harris is an Evan Fournier who knows his role. Stop it. What? Stop it. Really? So if Evan, if Evan focused on his three-point shot, didn't try to do more than that, shot three three-pointers a game, you don't think that would be Joe Harris? I, I think, yeah, okay, so if you put it from a perspective, maybe, because you have players out there that know what their strengths are and they stick to their strengths. I would put Joe Harris in the conversation of, um, oh, I'm drawing a blank. What's the guy's name that plays for the Bucks? Kyle Korver. Mm. Yep. He would be in the Kyle Korver range. I'm not saying that he's anywhere near as good as Ray Allen, but just a, a pure shooter that knows that that's what your job is. You are not to do anything else. He's also a player because shooters of that caliber – they're in the league for a very, very, very long time, and they're normally not appreciated really until like the end of their career. But Joe Harris is definitely a guy that I like. Right. Definitely a guy. I saw. I saw someone was trying to do a case for Dwight Howard. Um, that didn't make sense no. to me. But the the only the only one that I think on paper, and because if you take a look at the free agency class, it's really not all that great either. Uh. Uh-huh. uh- like Evan Evan Fournier right now is listed as the second best available shooting guard in free agency as a restricted free agent. Now let me let me ask you guys this real if quick. If he had wanted to become a free agent. Could we make a trade for a wing? Do you think that's the way we go? It's not a free agent, but we go out there and, and, and make a trade and get a starting small forward. But who? It, it's weird it's weird because we initially thought that if we were gonna have that wing that we we're gonna use the fifteenth pe- the the fifteenth pick for it. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that, that wasn't the case. So now you're looking at either uh exhausting your future options, which we know that this front office isn't gonna do, and then you take a look at the pieces that you have, you're looking at Aaron Gordon, Evan Fournier, Nikola Vucevic as your your core of value but i think that we value our picks way too much or value our players way too much like what would be a value for nikola vucevic i think what would be a value for aaron gordon i think we're in a position uh one thing that interested me earlier today was gordon hayward uh you know the team not um was it was it a player option that he declined it yeah, was player his option. player option yeah. that he declined, and he turned down how much? Almost 34, thirty million. Thirty four million. So, is it going to be that they're just going to restructure his deal and re sign him, or, which is a long shot, could we see a, a, a sign and trade um, of Gordon Hayward so, to Orlando for Vooch? One way that I, I had thought about that working, I asked you guys in the group chat the other day, is do you sign him, but then you trade Vooch to the Celtics? So sign and trade, like you mentioned, yeah. that just brings perfect roster balance to our team it's not gonna happen we're not gonna trade Vooch I, I know us but if you think about it from just logically it makes sense it's a vet but he plays a three he can shoot it he can create off the dribble again it, it, it would fit the new Orlando magic that we're trying to build it's this team that can shoot the ball and, and be just a different team but again we're not trading Vooch so we're not going there but that would make sense it's it's hard to look at it because let's say that that were the case, right? Let's say because Gordon Hayward, he's in, from my understanding, what I've read, he's really disappointed in how they treated his role in Boston. And the reason why he let go of that money is because he wants nothing to do with the Celtics. Even even though he has a really good relationship with the head coach, in my opinion, no one's going to give him that same exact money. Oh, no. just, in, injury is definitely going to going to take a, a toll on that. But like, let's say that you do bring a player like Gordon Hayward, right? A a strong caliber small forward. Is it just going to be for this year only? Because you have Jonathan Isaac that you want to play in that three mold, and then. Let's say that that's not the case. Let's say that Magic want to do something drastic and put Jonathan Isaac at the four instead of the three. Then what are your intentions with Chumo Kiki? What if he plays really, really well? And now you're stuck with this big, massive contract for a player that you're just going to have come off the bench. An example of that is like Al Horford with Philly. 
that they ended up spending X amount of money on this guy, and he was coming off the bench for him. So you're now you're paying a bench guy starting money. Yeah, and that's that's the dilemma I think the Magic as a, as a front office have is what do we do? Because again, like you mentioned, ideally it makes sense. Like yeah, we could trade Gordon next year when Isaac comes back, and now you have Isaac at the four, Hayward at the three. But now, like you said, what do you do with Okiki? What do you do with you know that depth that you have at the, at the forward position? Um, so I think that's the dilemma that we're having, and that's why we got to make a trade at some point where we trade two for one, and that means two talented guys for ideally a superstar. Um, because, again, we have these issues in our roster where we don't know how to fix it. We really just don't at this moment, especially at the forward position. Yeah, man, it's going to be interesting to see what direction the Magic move into tomorrow. Um, and, and I think that there's going to be more. I think there's going to be a lot of um, a lot of different tweaks that the Magic add to this roster and, and some changes. Um, but to close this out, what are your final thoughts? Uh, man, uh, the same thing I said for the draft. Get me some more scorers, some more shooters, and I'll be a happy camper. we got plenty of defense, plenty of length. Just keep doing what Jeff Waldum said. He's going to add some shooting and some dynamic scorers. Keep, go get those. Yeah, I think we uh, we started in the, on the right foot by drafting a guard who can score. Um, and like I said, just keep it going. Put more more uh, weapons around this team, and um, I think I think that if the bottom of the conference, like I said last week, is getting better, you got uh, Charlotte who picked up Lamelo, for example. Um, you got the Wizards who are getting back a healthy John Wall. I think that the bottom of the conference is going to be a lot more competitive. And I think it's up to Orlando to make sure that they have the weapons to keep them, if not, you know, higher up, at least still at that eighth seed. The Magic need to make a decision, whether that's to take a step forward or take a step back. What we can't do is be right there in the middle where we have no idea the direction that we're going. I'm okay with either options. If you want to take a step back so that the youngins can can kind of take over, I'm okay with that. But if you want to take a step forward, then we need to make sure that we make the right moves to get us in that position. But being where we're at is not an option. And I think the funnest part about this as a fan with everything that's going on is that I feel confident that we are going to make that decision this time around. And it's going to be fun to see where, where it is that they take us. But uh, guys, definitely a good episode. We look forward to finding out, again, what the outcome of this week is. That's a wrap for us. Thank you. Peace. Thank you for listening to the Ozone Podcast, the voice of Magic fans. Be sure to visit our website, theozonepod.com. And remember to subscribe, rate, and leave a review on all your favorite podcast listening platforms.